Hey everyone, I'm super excited to bring you this episode with my mindset coach, Tony Child. Um, if you listen to my other podcast, my Kick Ass Life podcast, which is a mindset podcast with L. Russ, you've probably heard me talk about Tony a lot because when I talk about mindset, he comes to mind. I've been doing his program for, I think, about the last two years or so. Completely next leveled my mindset, um, connecting me to my purpose, brought me into abundance, you know, tripled my income. Like it's, he's, his work is so incredible. And he's, um, going into how he got into it. You know, he's learned from Bob Proctor and John Maxwell and shares his own story of having to really heal his mindset and and live into his purpose and be brave and bold and change his whole life. And now he has this incredible thriving mindset, um, company, the, the websites that you can visit, um, we'll link in the show notes. It's tonychild.com. If you you're interested in any of his speaking, um, and then keep elevated. Also, you can go to for his programs and coaching and all of that. So man, if you like mindset, you're in for a treat. This is, this is my dude. As I call him my mindset Yoda. I tease him. He's, he's really good. Really, really good. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in. Here is my interview with Tony Child. Okay. Before we jump into the show, I've got a special announcement real quick, and it is about my higher retreats. We are finally rolling on this. This is a project that's been in the work for two years for me, and we are finally going. Our first higher retreat is going to be in April in Zion's National Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion, but oh man, it's in Southern Utah. It is incredible. Check out my Instagram for pictures if you haven't seen. It is just like one of the most magical places in the world. People come from all over the world to see this place. Um, So we are going to be doing it there April 21st through 24th, 2022. And I wanted to let you guys know we are still in our early bird pricing right now. Um, We sold a lot of it. We filled more than half the retreat in our pre-sale, but we still have one shared room left. So if you want to come with somebody and save some money, jump on that. Um, I am doing this with Be The Wellness. They are helping me put on this retreat. Be The Wellness is amazing. They are like my dream end goal of all retreats. And they have decided to help other people like me put on retreats. So it's going to be phenomenal. They're award-winning retreat um, hosts. And yeah, it's it's going to be good. So you have to go to their website. It's going to be Be The Wellness. So B-E-E. Make sure you follow them on Instagram, by the way, also. But B-E-E, The Wellness, be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire. All of the details are there. You have pricing. Um, you can register right there on the website. All of the schedule, all of the people who are coming. We have a shaman coming to do a fire ceremony the first night. We have an amazing yoga, meditation, breathwork facilitator. Catherine Dixon, who is like, I don't know what to call her, my like spiritual guide in life. <laughs> um, she is facilitates the work of Byron Katie and she has an episode here on inside out health. I would highly suggest listening to that. She is a life changer. She's going to be facilitating, um, two days at the retreat. So I'm so excited to have Catherine coming. She's like my secret weapon. She's amazing. So, um, yeah, all the details are on that website. Go check it out. Take advantage of the early bird pricing we have going, um, for the next uh, week and a half. So that will end on, I guess maybe it's a little less than that by the time you hear this. That ends on August 8th at 8 p.m. So 888, okay? August 8th at 8 p.m. Mountain Time is when the early bird pricing ends. So if you want to get in on that, get in on that now. Um, And yeah, if this is something that's pinging, if you feel like you need a reset, connect to nature, connect with like-minded people, take a look inside at what you got going on and leave with some tools on how to control your stress response and challenge your stressful thoughts and find out what might be going on inside of you that you're just not seeing. This is going to be amazing. We have a private chef coming, all gourmet paleo meals. It's going to be incredible. So um, yeah, check that out. Be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that 
I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios. Right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount onto you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. All right, guys, I have got, I like to tease Tony and call him my mindset Yoda because he is so wise, such an excellent mindset coach. And one of the things I love about Tony, I love how real and vulnerable you're willing to be. You know, I'm in your elite coaching group and I love the power that comes from that vulnerability and sharing of like, you know, you're expert at what you do. You've been doing this a long time, but it's like one of the things that makes you so expert is that realness and vulnerability that you bring. So I really appreciate that. And um, I wanted to share how we met real quick because I think it is a good intro to what you do. Yeah. Um, I actually met Tony guys at a mastermind, Scott Duffy and to- now Tony's mastermind, Breakthrough Mastermind. They've partnered on that. And um, I I was honestly led there by getting introduced to Bob Proctor's book, uh, The Art of Living, and got on Law of Attraction. Uh, maybe a year later, I'm in this mastermind and I hear you talking about something and I'm like, have you read, uh, what, what book was it, Tony? Um, the, the happiness advantage. Yes. The happiness advantage. <laughs> and you were like, oh yeah, yeah. I, my whole business is positive psychology. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, and then it turns out you were Bob Proctor's <laughs> like number one consultant or something for a while. Correct. So a few yeah. years maybe. Yeah. So I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You were his like, wait, what? The law of attraction is real. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we, you know, many of my listeners know that it is definitely real and very effective. Um, but I, I thought, you know, I'd love for you to share the story of how you created your company when you asked what to create. Do you mind sharing that? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, first of all, let me give you some history about kind of me. Um, I'm very analytical. My brain is very right brained. Um, And, and so I think that's the brain or is it left brain? I don't Um, know which brain it is, but anyways, (laughs) I'm very analytical. Um, I was a banker for 15 years and um, so very mathematical, very Tetris brained, you know, that that's where I was at. Um, And so for 15 years, I just felt like there was something there that was like speaking to me, but I didn't know what it was. It was like this lump in my throat of like, there's something more out there, Tony. And, and for me, I thought my whole life was going to be banker. Like that's, it was banker, Tony, that's who he is. And, um, (laughs) that's so tragic. Just uh, like, that would be so tragic. We were helping so many people now. Anyway, (laughs) So that was, that was, that was what I thought my life was going to be was just banker, Tony. And so Um, The way that that was going to play out is I was just going to work my way up the corporate ladder and I would retire when I was 65 at the top of the corporate ladder. I wanted to be the CEO of a bank and, you know, making a few hundred thousand dollars a year. And that was it. Like that, that was the like pinnacle of my life. And so I did that for 15 years. I started as a teller, then I went to a banker and then I went to a manager and then I went commercial lending. And so went up this ladder and I ended up getting to be a regional sales manager. So I was over all the sales of about 200 employees. And uh, the bank would send me to different workshops to just bring back information to be able to teach to to my people. Mm -hmm. And so they sent me to a workshop out of Harvard based on the book that you just referenced, The Happiness Advantage. And I remember it like it was yesterday because the person that was teaching the class, she said, okay, and it was like the first couple of sentences. She said, when you change the way you see things, everything in your world will change. Yeah. And I remember I like nudged my boss. She was standing, she was sitting right next to me. I said, 
that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and I leave. And she wow. said, if you want to get fired, you'll leave. I was like, okay, I'll stay. <laughs> Cause wow. I didn't want to get fired. So I stayed and the next three hours blew my mind. I was, I was mind blown mm. of positive psychology. And that when you change your brain from negative or neutral to positive, all of the incredible things that can take place. I was hooked. It was like a drug. It's like, yeah. oh my heavens, I, I have to know more. Yeah. So I changed everything. I changed my degrees in college. I was just about graduated, Tara. Like just wow. like, I was months within graduating, totally like canned it and said, I'm going to get wow. my degrees in com- communications and psychology. And so I wow. totally changed everything in my degrees, got my degrees in communications, be able to speak yeah. and share and teach and then an emphasis in positive psychology. Mm. And um, so then what I thought is like, I want to learn from the very best that yeah. know about this. Yep. And in, and for me, there were two people that like were, were my idols. And one was John Maxwell, John C. Yeah. Maxwell. And so I went and met with him and I went down to Florida. I became a coach of John C. Maxwell's. And while I was there, I got introduced to Bob Proctor. And I didn't know who Bob was before I met John Maxwell. And that's the second person. And I found that Bob Proctor was the best in the world at that time in teaching about the conscious subconscious paradigms. Um, Mm -hmm. And he had been taught by Earl Nightingale, who had been taught by Lloyd Conant, who had been taught by um, Napoleon Hill who wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. So it's kind of this like lineage down to Bob Proctor. And now Bob Proctor, I hired him. I was like, all right, Bob, you're going to teach me. And so um, I became Bob's number one consultant in the world. So I would work in Europe and I worked here in the United States. And I was doing all of this, by the way, while I was at the bank, all of it, (laughs) while I was Tony the banker. I was moonlighting as Tony the coach, you know? And um, so when I was working with Bob, I would go to these events called the matrix. Maybe some Mm -hmm. of your listeners have been to the matrix. It's an event. It's like 15 K to go to the event. And Mm -hmm. I was a, I was a table facilitator. Mm -hmm. And the way that that would happen is people at the tables, they would like, Bob, if you can imagine, if you, anybody knows Bob Proctor, he just yells and like, Oh, do you know what you want? Like, you know, he just gets really (laughs) intense. Like, and so he's up on stage. He's like, you gotta know what you want. And he's like yelling on the stage. And, and our job as table facilitators were to able to help his clients get really clear on what they wanted. Nice. That was our job. Mm. And what I found is as he's yelling on the stage, what do you want? 80%, like eight out of the 10 people I'm helping, they're just like this washed over glazed look on their face. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I want. And about two out of 10, so two of them would be able to get it. Like they got it. It's like, here's what I want. Here's what I, here's my vision. Here's what I'm working on. Right. And so I knew, I knew there was something missing. I knew that there was something more before a person can get really clear on their vision Mm. and what they want to manifest. Mm. I knew that there was something missing. And so, Mm. you know, I went to the drawing board and I remember I, I knelt down one day and as a man of God, I just said, okay, God, like, what is it? What's missing? What's the thing that the one thing that if I taught it, it would transform people. It would get them prepared to figure out what they wanted. Like, I remember that day of just like, what do I teach people? Yeah. And it was super clear. It was teach people how to be grateful. And I, I literally laughed out loud, Tara. I was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Cause it's so simple. It's like, are you serious? Like grateful? Really? That's it. And then, (laughs) but, but then I said, well, and I kind of said it in my head, well, I'm grateful. And it was like that frying pan over the head moment with God. It's like, no, you're not. Wow. You're not grateful. And so I, I said, okay. So, so then my next question changed the next two years of my life. So my next question of God was what does it mean to be grateful? Right. And that took me into a two-year study of gratitude wow. and what gratitude can do for people. And from that was born the program Gratishift. And that's the first program I ever wrote. And it's by far my favorite program because it literally came from God, I believe. I yeah. mean, I was just like, in when I wrote it, it was like this, like, 
transformative experience where I was just writing as fast as I could get the downloads. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so I wrote the whole program in like a weekend and then I launched it. And my whole goal was I'm just going to use this as a precursor to Bob's programs. Cause that's mm-hmm. what like I was right. selling at the time. Right. And then I found another gap. It was like, okay, when a person shifts out of lack and into abundance, which is what gratitude does, then it's like, well, they need to know why they're alive before what they want to create. Cause I believe that alignment yeah. is when we know why we're alive and we align everything we're creating with that. Why? Yeah. And so what I see all the time, especially in personal development is people get so success hungry or yeah. money hungry that right. it's like, I just got to, I just got to have a million dollars. Like I just got to manifest a million dollars. And in the process of manifesting their million dollars, they throw away everything that's important yeah. to them. Yep. And so I saw that over and over. So I created purpose, which is the yeah. next program. And then I was like, well, people need to know about the mind because Bob really doesn't teach people about the mind. So then I wrote mind, then I wrote words, then I wrote belief, then I wrote image. And then I came back and I wrote vision after all of those. Most people don't know that I wrote my third program last or yeah. so so anyways, I have all these programs now. And then it got to the point where it's like, okay, my material is actually transforming people a lot faster than any other material I've used. And so that's how Elevated was born. I quit my job and we can talk about that story. That was a crazy story. Um, I, I'm because I mean, making six figures at a bank, like yeah. that's as easy as it gets, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay. And, and you're like, I mean, you're seeing some success, but it's like, so you're going to start a gratitude a, a yeah, gratitude, gratitude company? business. <laughs> yeah, well, do you? And first, before you, I would do want you to share that. But bef- first, I just want to say, like, I've done all of Tony's programs. Many people know that I've done his programs. I now, after my clients do my first ninety days of personal development, they do Tony's program. You know, and I've seen not only in my own life, but in many others. And you know, I'm in one of your coaching groups, and it's just like. I think to me, I mean, beyond all the benefits of like understanding my purpose and vision and, and, you know, you did one on people I did recently. It was just so good. So eye opening. Um, and, uh, but what I've noticed is like, I have an anchor in everything that I'm doing that really came from that process because somebody asked me the other day, they're like, why do you want to do all this stuff so bad? Like, why do you want to create all this stuff? And I'm like, for me, it's like, it's the reason it's my reason for being like, I'm tapped Mm -hmm. into a higher power and I'm getting all these downloads. And I'm like, it's like, I, there's nothing else I want to do more. And I think that comes from that anchor though, of knowing your purpose, getting clear on your vision. And I love how you talk about values too. I definitely want you to share that. Cause that's like one of my favorite things that you teach is like how to identify what you really value. But yeah. And somebody's like, well, what if, what if like God changed it? What if you didn't feel like you were supposed to do any of that anymore? I'm like, I would change. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, I mean, for sure. But yeah, it's, there's, you're so right. Like, it's kind of like, um, it used to be like, I want to be like Mike, you know, um, everybody want to be a professional athlete back in like the eighties and nineties. And now I feel like it's, I want to be like Gary or I want to be like, like Elon, you know, it's like this superstar entrepreneur is this thing. And I see all these 19, 20, 21 year old, especially boys, but, um, or men, I guess, and girls too, but they, it's like, they have this frenzy. They, they, they seem so, um, pressured and like, I just have to be a millionaire and have my cool Instagram car yeah. photos. And like, I'm going to trade cryptocurrency and I'm going to be rich like tomorrow. And it's like, Ooh, I can see that they're, they've lost their souls in it a little bit. Yeah. And so, yeah, like it, it, what's hilarious is if they do your program, if they do this kind of stuff, they'll get there so much faster because it's all the subconscious stuff that they haven't looked at at all. That's going to help them get there. But, um, yeah, let's, uh, do you mind sharing your, your message on values? I love this. And then let's get into your transition story. Cause that'll be fun. Yeah. So values, mm-hmm. when, when you think about why you're alive, um, most people believe that it's all based on strengths. So it's like, what am I good at? So, and we're taught this from the time that we're really, really small. Right. And so when I was really, really tiny, like I've always been good at math. Like my brain is just mathematical. I can do Mm -hmm. math in my head. I can do multiplication. I can figure out problems in my head. Like I'm really good at math. And so in high school and junior high and elementary school and college, like, as I would go to professors or counselors or teachers or coaches, and I would ask them like, Hey, what, sh- what should I do with my career? Yeah. What should I do with my life? It was based off of two things. How much money can you make? Yeah. 
And what are you good at? Right. That was it. Yeah. It was like, well, you're really good at math and you can make some pretty good money with math skills. So you can be an engineer, you can be an accountant, you can be a banker, you can be, you know, an architect, you can do a lot of things with your, with your math skills. And so that's, I just listened to that. It's like, okay, right. well, I'm going to be a banker then. And so I started <laughs> as a teller and I worked my up, way up through the banking. It was super easy for me, like really simple, really easy. But when I would get home at night, I would completely forget about banking. It didn't have me, right? It didn't have my soul. It didn't like, so, so I do believe before I get to values, I believe that there's three different types of people in this world. The vast majority of people have jobs. It's a means to an end, right? They go to work, they come home, they get a paycheck. They, the paycheck goes into the bank to them pay for their stuff. They're literally existing in life. And, and they go to their job that they don't like, but it's a means to an end. And so they, they hate it. And, yeah. and there's so many people that that's their life is they yeah. just have a job, a J-O-B. Yeah. And, and then there are people that have careers. I was a career banker. And, and, and in careers, like people genuinely like the people that they work with. They like the things that they do, but they're not in love with it. It doesn't yeah. like... It doesn't take them up at night, like wake them up right. in the middle of the night with inspiration. Right. And and so my career, like I would just forget about it when I got home. I didn't hate it, but I didn't yeah. love it. Right. It was just like, but you, I got to a point where I, I felt like I was stuck though, because I was so good at it. So I would keep progressing and every progression I would get a raise and then my quality of living would, le- would increase. Right. So I got to a point where it's like, how the heck do I leave this? Right. It's like, so safe. It's so safe. And, and so <laughs> we get that here in a second, but then there's the third group. And this is where you find your calling. Yeah. And it literally, the word calling, that is the exact thing that it's doing is it is calling after you. Yeah. That lump that I felt in my chest that like, there's something more. I don't know what it is. That was my calling and was calling after me. And I couldn't, yep. I couldn't pinpoint it. I couldn't put my fingers on it. And so part of figuring out why you're alive is not just knowing what you're good at, which is important. It's also knowing what are you passionate about? What are your desires? What is the thing that keeps you up at night? What's the thing that like, man, I really want to do that. It's where your passion lies. And then there's a middle piece that most people forget. They don't address. And that is what do you value? Because most people, they either do what they're good at or they do what they're passionate about. And in both cases, they never identify, what's my value system? Mm -hmm. What's the things, what are my non-negotiables? What are the things that I'll never compromise? So here in Utah, this is where I live. Here in Utah, Tara, if you were to walk up to anybody on the street and say, hey, what are your top three values in life? What do you value the most? What are the top two answers guaranteed they'll be in the top three? There's two of them. Probably God or religion and family. God and family. That's it, right? Those are like one and two, and it's usually one or two in everyone's list here in Utah, okay? Yeah. It's God and family. If I were to go up to them and I were to say, okay, that's awesome. Now, can I see your checkbook and your calendar? (laughs) Can I ask them, can I see your checkbook? Because I want to see how much money you've spent on God and how much money you've spent on your family. And I want to look at your calendar because I want to see how much time you've spent with God. And I want to see how much time you've spent with your family. You will see a warped sense of what that person thinks they value versus what they actually value. Because you'll find that they actually value sports because that's where they spend all their time. And they value they value uh, work because they yeah. spend 90 hours a week at work. Right. And it's like... Yep. So you got to determine what are your value systems. And and I think what what really eats at people is all the shoulds of life. Well, I should value God. I should value my family. (laughs) I should value these things. But I actually value these things over here. And it's like, well, get real with yourself. Yep. And I like, don't should on yourself. That's what I, you know, share. Don't should on yourself. What do you want? What do you value? Now, if you want to value God and family, then make sure your time and money matches it. Yep. And make sure that when you make decisions in the future about your careers and your visions and the things you're going to do, that if it's going to compromise God or family, you're out. 
You just say, I'm, right. I'm out. I'm sorry. That compromises my non-negotiables. Yep. So, so, but own it, whatever it is. I don't care what it is, but own it. And uh, so I know one of your key values is health. Yeah, absolutely. One of your non-negotiables. It's like, so if I were to say, hey, Tara, I'm going to pay you $10 million, but but you got to work 90 hours a week and you're not going to be able to go work out anytime because um, you're going to be working so hard. If I'm going to pay you $10 million, what would you say if I no. told you, you couldn't work out and I would give you $10 million? I'm like, no freaking way because I would lose it. I, I'll earn that myself <laughs> living yeah. the life I want to live. Like, no way, you know, no way. Because to me, that's no way to live. Right. And, and, I and that's, love, but that's your values, that's, right? Your non negotiables. It's like, Tony, I don't care what you'll pay me. My answer is always no. Yeah. Always no. You know, it'd be like somebody being like, let, let, let me take your kids away for $5 billion. It's like not even remotely close ever, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think, um, you know, this, what you're saying here, the reason I think this is so healthy is just like you're saying, like, it's almost like people are shamed for certain, these are certain things you can value. And these are certain things that you can't. Right. So if you value, you know, I don't know, cooking food a lot in your spare time or crafting or scrapbooking or whatever. It's like, eh, well, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, even health and fitness. When I first got started, it was like, oh, you, you're spending a little too much time, like caring about yourself and what you look like. And I'm like, I freak, I'm happy as crap in there. Or like, I love it in there. It's like joy to my soul, but it's like, nope, you shouldn't though. You should value other things. So I, I appreciate this message so much because it removes the shame and guilt. And it's just like reality. What do you freaking love? And like yeah. giving and all the permission. SH words, they all go to the same place. The the shoulds lead to shame and the shame is just shit. So let's <laughs> just get rid of it. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So, so, so let's hear what was your transition like? Cause you know, the shoulds were, uh, you invested a oh, lot in this God. career, Tony, you should stay here. It's safe here. So what was that like? <laughs> yeah. So, so first of all, before I share that, let me, let me share something really, really important sure. for you and your listeners to understand. If you were to take three times your income right now, say, okay, what's three times my income? And you were to multiply that out and say, okay, can you do that this year? Most people will be like, well, no, I don't even know how to do that this year. So then they default to, I can't, yeah, or they default to that's impossible. Yeah. And what, what I, what I envision or what I can imagine is like, if you can imagine like there's this dot, so just imagine this dot on a piece of paper and you're the dot. And then outside of the dot, just imagine that there's a circle outside of the dot. That circle is your comfort zone. But right around the dot, like super close to the dot is another circle. And that's your safe zone. Mm. And most people live life right in the safe zone. And when they get to the ragged edges of their comfort zone, where it's like, I want to puke right now because I don't know what this feels like. I've never felt this before. Most of the time, people believe that that is that's like this answer from God that says, go back. No, that's your brain saying what you're about to do right now is super unfamiliar. And I love homeostasis. So get the hell right. back right. to homeostasis. And we mistake it as humans of like, well, it must be wrong because I'm feeling this like crap in my stomach. Right. It's like, no, it's just super unfamiliar. Yeah. And so I knew this. I knew that if I was going to, because one of my goals was I wanted to make my annual income in my month. In, in one month. That was one of my goals. I want to make my annual income in a month. And I knew that that would never, ever happen in the bank right. ever. And so it's like, okay, so Tony, you're going to have to leave this safety zone right around there. Yeah. And every time I would think about it, it was like, I would get nauseous just thinking yeah. about it. I had spent 15 years in banking. Yep. Most people can't understand this because they only know me as like Tony, the mindset guru. They don't know mm -hmm. me as like, I spent, like, I know banking backwards and forwards. Like people don't <laughs> understand, like, <laughs> like my background is in banking and, and it was yeah. super familiar. By the way, think about the safety zone of a banker. Okay. Every holiday off. Right. Every weekend off. I was home by five o'clock every night. I didn't go right. in until 8 a.m. every morning, maybe even 9 a.m. I had every birthday off. I had every anniversary off. I had five <laughs> weeks of vacation every year and I made six figures. Yeah. Now talk about the epitome of safety. Totally. Like this is like, 
And so when I would go up to my banker friends and I would ask them like, Hey, I'm thinking about starting a coaching business and, uh, you know, going out and kind of venturing on my own. And from everyone, it was like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. You are going to, you are like, why would you ever leave this? What, th- this is the most safe thing you could ever do in your life is like precisely. And if I never get outside of my safe zone, I will never live into my potential. And so I went to my wife and I told her my plan. I said, okay. I want to quit the bank. And she said, okay, so here are the rules. You got one rule and then you can quit the bank. It was like, all right, give me the rule. And she's like, you have to save an annual salary in the bank before you can leave. Mm. I got to be able to see it in the account. I said, awesome challenge. (laughs) Okay. Challenge accepted. So I, again, at the time I was working with Bob Proctor and I started going and marketing clients overseas. So I would work overnight. I would coach overnight. And then I would go into the bank at 8 a.m. and I'd work all day. I'd get off at five o'clock. I'd go home. I'd have dinner. I'd sleep from eight until one in the morning. And then I would help clients from one until four. Wow. And then I would go and take an hour nap. And then I would get up to go to work again. And I did that for seven months. Wow. This is the stuff people don't see when they're like, wow, cool. That's awesome. You have this successful mindset coaching (laughs) company. It's like, guess what? (laughs) I love hearing this side of things. You know, they have no clue how it all started. Right, you're like, I went to hell and back to build this, like, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. and I've still gotten to major (laughs) depths. So, I, um, anyways, after seven months, I I had envisioned by this day every day, I would envision myself like turning my computer screen around and showing my wife and like having it logged into our internet banking, and she would see the account and she would see the amount. And I just envisioned her saying, So, when are you going to quit? Like, that's that's what I had going through my head over and over and over again. And it was the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. I had logged into our account to see, okay, where are we at for Black Friday? And I like, whoa, whoa. Like I looked at it and it was, it was my annual salary. Nice. It was right there. Nice. I had had a few deposits come in that I wasn't expecting. It's like, okay, there, there, there's the amount. <laughs> and so that was the day I was like, Okay, this is the day. My wife walks in. I'm in. I'm in there, and I'm going through the banking. My wife walks in the bedroom. I like it's. It literally played out exactly the way that I played it in my head. I turned my computer screen around. I showed her the amount. She said the exact words that I thought that she would say. And that's <laughs> when are you going to quit? Love it. Love and it. And I I got so freaking scared. Mm. Like that pit of like I, <laughs> yeah. I seriously I wanted to puke. I didn't. <laughs> I I didn't know what to tell her because like I had done all the precautions, but now that this is where the rubber hits the road, it's like, you actually got to go quit now. It's like jumping off a high dive. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Jumping off a hundred foot cliff, not the high dive. Like (laughs) this is a hundred foot cliff when you're afraid of heights. Like (laughs) this is what this is comparable to, right? Yeah. So um, if you, and by the way, it's a great comparison because if you go, if you're afraid of heights and you up to a hundred foot cliff, how long does it take them to take a step off the cliff to repel or to do something like it, hours, it hours <laughs> if not never. Right. Yeah. And so it took me two weeks before I wrote my letter of resignation, mm. two weeks, I would keep writing it and then I would erase it mm-hmm. and I would write it and I would erase it. I would like shred it and I'd throw it away. And then one day it was December 15th. I had the courage to take my letter and walk it into my boss's office and let him know that, okay, I'm done. So I got my letter. I was in my office. I was taking these deep breaths. I'm like, you can do this, Tony. You got this. You got this. (laughs) Like totally pumping myself up. Right. So I've got my letter. It's in my hands. I fold it up. I've got it. And I walk right into my boss's office. And, and, and immediately he looks at my letter and he says, Oh, Tony, please don't tell me that's your letter of resignation. I was like, how the hell did you know? You know, I had, I, he knew that I was kind of doing this, but not to the point where it was like, I was quitting. Yeah. And so I was like, I had this overwhelming feeling, put the letter away. Hmm. It was like, it wasn't like, because most people would mistake that of like, you're quitting on yourself. And it was like, no, it was almost the universe saying you passed, Hmm. you passed the test. Now put the letter away. Hmm. And this peace and this calmness came over me. 
So I took the letter and I put it in my pocket. I'm like, no, we can talk about this later. I said, what's going on? What do you need to talk about? He said, oh, Tony, I'm so grateful that wasn't your letter. We have to eliminate your job today. And if you would have given me a letter of resignation, I wouldn't be able to give you eight month severance. <gasps> no way. Yep. I never heard this story. That is insane. Yep. So I dropped to my knees crying like a baby. And my Seriously. boss thought that I was crying because I had just lost my job. So he's sitting there. <laughs> he's like, Tony, I promise you we'll find something in the bank. We'll find something. I promise you. I'm like, no, I quit. Like I take wow. the severance. I'm gone. Wow. And I was just crying because it was like the universe is just saying, dude, taking care of you. We and got you. We got you, bud. Yes. And it is, I definitely feel the truth of like, but you needed that moment where you're like, I'm going to do this. Right. Cause that, that courage, that, you know, that choice that I'm showing up for myself and I'm going to freaking do this. It was, that is an insane story, Tony. That does yeah. not surprise me. That is so freaking <laughs> cool. And then can, do you mind sharing about what you shared in the mastermind about this goal of yours to make your income yearly income in a month? Do you mind? Yeah. Sharing? Yeah. So I I've had this goal for the last five years and a lot of people, they're like, well, why did it take you five years? And it's like, cause I had a pretty thick mindset around what I was worth and what yeah. I could make. Yeah. And so I, I would get close and then I would sabotage and then I would get close mm. and then I would sabotage and I would mm. sabotage when I would get really close to it because of my own worthiness issues and whether, you know, my own issues around money, beliefs around money. I had grown up in a household where it was beaten into me that money is the root of all evil mm -hmm. and you shouldn't want money. And, wow. and so because of that, it didn't matter how much I wanted it that belief of it, you're evil. If you take this, you're yeah. evil. If you have it, it, it plagued me. Totally. It plagued me for years until yeah. I finally got to the space of like, no, I can do so much good with money. I can, right. I can change the world with money. Right. And, um, I believe that money is just the great accentuator. It accentuates who you already are. If you're an egotistical maniac, then money will just make you a more egotistical maniac. If you're a very generous, loving person, money will just make you a more generous, loving person. Yeah. Um, and and I, I just, I truly believe that I have a good heart. And, oh. um, and so money, it's just made, it's made my heart bigger. It's made my willingness to help people stronger. Well, and, and it allows you, you have this builder brain, right? You know, you did yeah. my neurotyping thing. It's I consider you like the engineer brain, which is obvious why you've been able to create such awesome programs that are so effective, but you know, it allows you to build more awesomeness money. Allow, you know, if you, if you were strapped, it would be like, well, I'd like to do all these cool things that create impact, but I can't, you know, so yeah. it allows you to build more awesomeness. So anyway, I continue. So I was on. working, working my tail off, you know, and, and every time I would get close to my goal, I'd like, get knocked down. I'd get knocked down. And then last year, um, I did some really, really powerful work during the, during the pandemic, um, a lot of deep, deep work on myself. And, um, it was during the pandemic of all places that I looked down at my, cause I have Stripe. That's where we, you know, yeah. collect payments. And I looked down at Stripe. It's the middle of November. And I have three times my annual income in my Stripe account during Seven. that month. Wow. And it was like, oh my heavens, I just did three times. And ever since that month, I've hit my annual income every single month since last <laughs> November. It's so cool. And you're doing so much good, you know, and you're, you're creating more wealth for more people by doing yeah. what you do too. So it's just like this win, win, win. That's amazing. And it's, it's cool to see Tony, how much you have lived what you're now teaching, you know, you've had to overcome and rewrite your subconscious mind and get through all these barriers of getting out of the safe zone. And you know, that, that sick feeling in your stomach, I've definitely been there where it's like, Oh gosh, you know, and yeah. it's, it's cool <laughs> I'm to gonna see puke moment. That's what yeah, it is. A puke, puke moment. And you know, mine wasn't as substantial as yours, but I, I it was a cool moment for me because 
I, I literally was like, I had nothing. And I had this one little job and I was clinging to it like crazy. Cause it was like, this is safe. This is my only freaking lifeline. And it, uh, I, I, I like this. I like visuals. So I, I like to think of the universe. Sometimes you're like clinging. It's trying to close a door on you because it knows it's good for you. And you're like clinging to the molding around it. And it's just like slowly peeling the fingers off. It's like, you're going to be okay. Just let go, no. let go, let go. And sometimes it'll just kind of close it for you. And so this job, I got cut down to half time with no notice. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it forced me. And I remember the first month that I was on my own. So I was, you know, part-time for a little bit. And I, for the first month I was on my own, I made just over double what I had made in that one. And it was just so significant to me. It was like, oh, okay. Okay. I don't need a safe zone. I actually like when I live in my passion and I'm happy and I'm contributing, like it gets better. Got it. You know? So anyway, similar experience. Um, and I liken it to like, there's like four stages I think that God works with. Okay. mm -hmm. The first stage is like, if you can imagine just like snowflakes, it's just like you fill them on your head and you can kind of fill them on your body. And it's like, what is that? You know, what, what, what's, is this snowing? You know, you just, you, you, you just, it's these light, subtle things that happen in your life. It's like, Hey, let's go this direction. And life just so lovingly kind of pushes you or nudges you and yeah. says, Hey, go this direction and try yeah. this and, you know, get to this workshop about positive psychology. And I'm like, no, you know, and then it's like, yeah, Oh, okay. Now it's, <laughs> it's like this lovingly nudge of like, here you go. Let's, let's go. Can and, I interject real quick, Tony? Yeah. Sorry. I just have to say, I call this, um, like, you know, when you, you've had, you have kids, you know, when your kids are toddlers and they're like, I want a cookie. I want a cookie. They're like one, right? I want a cookie. I want a cookie. I want a cookie. And then you try to give it to them and they're like, no, yep, <laughs> right. Like, I do it. That's, that's what I feel like is with the universe with us. Sometimes when you were like, yeah. it's like, it's like, I want abundance. I want a better life. I want to be happy. And it's like, here you go. And you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're toddlers sometimes. So anyway, it just, oh, me I feel like we're toddlers. <laughs> like all the time, right? <laughs> so, so you've got this lovingly parent, I believe that's like, here's, here's some snowflakes. Here's yeah. a lovingly nudge. Life is going to take you this direction. And if you listen and you're open, that's the key. It's openness. If I had to tell what's the key to life, it's stay open. I think Wayne Dyer said yeah. it best. He said, I'm open to everything and attached to nothing. Yeah. I believe that that's the ultimate state of being is I'm yep. open to everything and I'm attached to nothing. Yep. And, and so when you're open, you can feel those snowflakes and it's like, huh, I wonder where this is going to take me. And you just lovingly go with it. But most people aren't that way. And so I can just imagine kind of God just taking this nice little snowball and he just hucks it at you. It's like, Ooh, oh <laughs> man. Okay. That, that kind of hurt, you know, that, and, and it's like, it's just those moments where it's like, it just causes your head to turn. And it's like, okay, what, what am I supposed to be noticing here? Right. And then most people will still dig their heels in. So I can imagine, you know, God going to the, to the gutter and he gets the, <laughs> the ice ball now, you know, it's like the ice ball with all of the little screws and things that are in it. And he just kind of packs it up and he just launches it right at your back. And you're like, Oh, oh ow, you know, and, and now it's like that hurt. That hurt really bad. And, and so this is where now pain comes in, right? Because sometimes it has to be painful for us to learn. So it's the, it's the ice ball in the back and, and we still didn't learn. And, and so now we're sitting there and we hear the rumbles and we hear the rumbles and what it is, is in the background, the whole freaking avalanche is coming at us now. And it just, boof, you know, this guy's like flies right over us. And it, it's like, why in the heck does it take an avalanche for me to figure something out? Why couldn't I figure it out with the freaking snowflakes? <laughs> and, and this is the intuition. This is what I've learned. I, you know, I, you, you know, I'm a, some of my listeners know I, I lost everything. I lost everything. I lost every penny in my name. I lost my dignity. I felt like in the moment I lost, I had no job at the moment. I had to ask my ex-husband to take my kids, you know, as somebody who I had it all together, this academic yeah. superstar and my 401k and my big yard and the boat and the full bit the, to hit that level was so humbling. And it was the avalanche. And I call, I call it my body slam from the universe, like wake up. And the yeah. whole thing could have been avoided by me listening to my intuition a little bit earlier. Now I, I feel like part of that situation was intuitively guided and I honor that. But when I, when it started to shift and it was like, now it's time to change. Now it's time to go. I wouldn't listen to it. I lived in those shoulds. I should it all over myself, Tony. And I was like, no, no, no. And you get this very disempowered energy and you're right. I I've lived it. And I'm like, okay, next time, how about I just listen to this a little sooner and just trust it. It's kind of scary and it doesn't make sense 
sense to my logical mind, but I'm really feeling this. All right, let me try it. And then magic, you know, so I've yeah. learned to trust it. It's just like, it puts you on this magical carpet ride of life that just is like full of wah, uh, wah, awe and wonder. And it's just <laughs> incredible. So I, I just had an experience this last week where I had to like put my money where my mouth is, you know, it's like, do you, do you practice what you preach? Mm. And, uh, and so, um, for those that are not aware of Utah, the real estate in Utah right now, we're July, 2021 is absolutely insane. Okay. It is a seller's market and, and sellers are getting 200, a hundred thousand dollars higher than normal on their homes. And they're selling in weekends. Like Mm -hmm. they'll put their homes up for sale on Saturday. And by Monday, they've got eight offers and people are bidding 60, 70,000 ahead of offer price. And they're not even caring about appraisals. So they're, they're going above what the house is even worse to just get into the house. Like this is a crazy market that we're in right now. Yeah. So, so my wife and I, um, about a month ago, we both kind of looked at each other and we're like, it's time to move. It's time, it's time to move. And so it's like, okay, well let's, let's do it the safe way. So the safe way of moving is we're going to go look at houses. And when we find one we want, then we'll put an offer into it and we'll put on our offer that, that the offer is contingent upon us selling our house. Mm-hmm. that's, that's the way that the offer is going to work. So we, we found a house that we really loved and we put an offer and we made it pretty aggressive over asking price, but we put the contingency it's contingent upon our house selling. And, um, they didn't, they didn't accept the offer. They accepted another offer that was full cash coming in from California. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, that sucks. So we did another offer. We found another house and it was like beautiful house. My wife absolutely loved the house. It was up on a hill, overlooked all of the Utah County. I mean, it was beautiful. And um, so we put another offer in on that one. Didn't even sniff it. Like we were so far away from the offer. as like, okay. And I just had this nudge. It was the, it was the snowflake moment yeah. from God yeah. that said, put your house up for sale. It was like, no, you don't understand. Like, I don't have a place to go. Like we can't even find a rental right now. Yeah, not alone, yeah. not even a house. Like Rentals if I are sell really my house, mm-hmm. where in the hell am I going to go? Mm-hmm. So I'm like having this conversation out loud with God. I'm like, mm-hmm. are you kidding me? No, like I, I can't <laughs> do this. And it's like, that's, you know, just the snowflakes. And it's like, no, yeah. put your house up for sale. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is what I preach. You know, yeah. you've got to put your faith out there first and then yep. power comes after. Yep. And it's like, Okay, I'll put my house up for sale. So we put our house up for sale and we find another house. The moment we put our house, first of all, it was two weeks ago. I rented a dump truck, a dumpster on Monday, spent all day Monday, all day Tuesday, like clearing out my basement and putting everything into the garage to show our house. Mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have pictures. Friday, it's on the market. Saturday, we have an open house. Monday, we have an offer. That's how it, that's how fast our house wow. sold. Wow. So that was like seven days house, right. house is sold. And so, but, but they didn't give me any hard money, earnest money, like to mm. where it was non-refundable mm. and I wanted some non-refundable just to feel secure about it. And, mm. and so we, we found a house we really loved in the process. So we put an offer on that house and, and it's not contingent upon sell anymore, but they mm. wanted non-refundable earnest money. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, uh, this just doesn't, (laughs) this feels too risky to me, too risky to put non-refundable earnest money on this. Cause they wanted like thousands and thousands of Uh non-refundable earnest money. It's like, nah, I don't want it that bad. Uh And so that was on Monday. We sold Wednesday. It fell through. They canceled. I was like, are you kidding me? So now we have to let the sellers of the house know of the one that we want to buy. We have to let them know. And they're in the process of figuring out bids that of of offers that they want to collect. And ours was their best offer, but now we didn't even have a home like that was under contract. Right. And so that night when it fell through, this is how much I feel like I've grown. I said, I just sat there and is like, huh. I wonder now what's coming because it's something better. Yeah. Because when yep. something leaves, it's making room for something better. That's what I was thinking. And so it's like, all right, 
what's coming. Yep. I, I need to know what's better. Yep. And so we put our house back on the market on Thursday morning. We had showings all day Thursday, all day Friday, Saturday morning. I have an offer in my inbox. It's the exact same amount. It's 40,000 over asking price. And it's a uh, hard money, earnest wow. money. So they yeah. have non-refundable earnest money in the thousands. Okay. The, the, like the exact amount that the other house wanted. Oh, wow. And so I accept the offer immediately Saturday morning, Saturday at noon, I call my real estate and say, all right, we got this hard money earnest. Let's put that towards this other home. That was all they were waiting for. As soon as we gave them the hard money, earnest money, boom, they accepted our offer. And now we are closing on our house on August 3rd and that house on August 4th, simultaneous close in this market is absolutely crazy. That is insane, Tony. That is insane. Wow. Yeah, no, I, it's, um, I, I think when you're living in, in tune and you're living on that frequency, it's like, it gives you so much peace because you know that you're always going to be taken care of. And this goes back to your gratitude shift. Honestly, yeah. this is what the abundance mindset. This is like, it's like, Oh, okay. Like I know that the universe is always there watching out for me and taking care of me. Like I know everything's going to be good, you know, and it doesn't mean you don't like use your mind or make decisions, but like when those promptings come in, when that, like that gut pool is like, mm, and you, and you listen to that, this stuff happens all the time. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing like, so many times throughout this interview, I'm like hearing, it's so cool to hear you walking the walk of everything that I've experienced and the coaching with you, you know? So it's, yeah, it's, 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 um, I feel the truth of that, you know? And that's why I recommend people do your program. You probably, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you've heard me talk about Tony. If you listen to my kick-ass life podcast, you've probably heard him come up about 50 times already. I talk <laughs> about you all the time on there because it's a mindset podcast, you know? So, um, anyway, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap this up, but I, I wanted to know, I know you have, you have a new website. I saw, by the way, it looks yeah. amazing. So is that, is that keep elevated.com? Yep, keep elevated. yep. yep. And then do you want to tell them about different ways that they can learn from you or participate in what you have to offer? Yeah. So keep elevated.com is, is where you can go to get, just to get information on the programs that we've developed and the process we put people through. Um, if you go to tonychild.com, that's where all my events are. Okay. Um, so tonychild.com, we do what's called the three X accelerator. Um, it's for high performers, high achievers, and it's to help them go three levels higher and faster. And it's learning these principles and, and harnessing this power to be able to go higher and faster uh, and so it's a five day, um, workshop that we do. We do them every five to six weeks and it's free. It's completely free. We, we just teach for five straight days. Um, we invite you into our community if you want to. And, uh, it's, it's just, how do I harness this power? We, we teach you over five days. So we'd invite you to come to that three X accelerator. We do them all the time. So just check our website for the next one. When it is, I think it's mid August is when we're doing our next one. So, um, yeah. To, yeah. Um, and I am starting my podcast. Like that's yes. one of the things. Cause I, I get people Tara all the time. Like, dude, when are you, where are you, where's your podcast? Like where, yeah. where can I hear you? Where can I consume totally. you? And it's like, um, I don't have one yet. I get yeah. on people's podcasts like this, but, right. um, now, now it's time for mine. So we'll, yeah. we'll do a little reciprocal here. We'll get you onto my podcast. Yay. Um, so we, we just landed on a name. Um, it's called soul deep with Tony child and it's, nice. uh, it's living life soul deep. You know, yeah. how, how are we getting to the soul of who we are and what we're here to do? And there, and, and there's a soul purpose that you have and you got to go soul deep to find it. Yeah. And guys, I, I like, I can't even begin to say Tony is such a masterful teacher. I mean, it, it's, it's cool to hear your history with, you know, I mean, it's basically straight from Napoleon Hill, who's, who changed my life to Bob Proctor to, you know, John Maxwell. It's like, mm -hmm. but it's cool that you've learned from all those people, but you definitely have your seat at the table. You know, it, it, Tony is just such an amazing, you're just such a good teacher. You're always on point. I think when we were on clubhouse for a while, I was always like, Oh, Tony's here. Let Tony go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, we'll link that in the show notes guys, um, on YouTube and then on all of our audio platforms, so you guys can get more of Tony. So, um, yeah, Tony, thank you so much for taking the time thank and you. I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Thank you.